with Stan Atkinson, Carol Bland, Weather with Shelley Monahan, Walt Gray on Sports, Home of Dan Shively and Live Copter 3, and Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. Before we come back with that shotgun and fired at me four times. Man is a miss. I don't know how he missed but. A security guard relives a terrifying moment during this morning's hostage siege in a downtown Sacramento office building. And tonight, the gunman who staged the siege is dead. And those who live through it are counting their blessings. The deadly shootout is our top story on this Friday night. It began as a routine Friday for the more than 2,000 people who work in the State Board of Equalization building. The 18-story building is Sacramento's newest high-rise, located near 4th and N Streets. But the routine ended just about 10 a.m. when a gunman entered the lobby and began shooting. Channel 3's Tracy Bryan was on the scene within moments, and she brings us these details. He said he has special. lots of ammunition, and he said he had a couple guns, and he just wants what he wants. Just get over by that corner, they're out of the range. There's a suspect upstairs. A gunman now identified as 53-year-old James Holloway shot bullets and fear into what should have been a peaceful, rainy morning at the Board of Equalization. As evacuees ran for safety, the security guard who first encountered Holloway stood helplessly by, handcuffed. Handcuffs placed on him by Holloway just before the gunman shot up the lobby. Well, we come back with that shotgun and fired at me four times. The man is a miss. I don't know how he missed, but I know he hit a few cameras in there and he blew the window out. And I managed to get out of there and took off. He blew the door away. And how he, how he missed that, uh, that security guard that got handcuffed, I'll never know. Because I think the, the, the glass took the, absorbed the shot. And, and I just kept running. As, I as evacuees ran for their lives, Holloway, a former CHP officer and Alcohol Beverage Control Board investigator, made his way to the 11th floor, where he reportedly fired another round and threatened the life of at least one worker before he headed for the 18th floor. He just looked like an average person, and he looked calm. That, that was the thing. He didn't look crazy or, uh, he you know, say anything didn't say anything. He said that he would not harm anybody as long as he got what he wanted which I have no idea what that is. In the end, Holloway took seven hostages, telling them he had tax problems he wanted fixed. Half an hour after his onslaught began, Holloway faced off against a SWAT team who had received permission to use deadly force. He turned to the officers, he told the officers he wasn't going to be taken alive, and as he turned to one of the officers, uh, he uh, opened fire and killed him. About 17 rounds were fired in that final shootout, none by Holloway, who was killed by SWAT team members. And so the man who came looking for a solution to his tax problems ended up paying with his life. Tracy Bryan, Channel 3, reports. We are starting to learn a lot more about the gunman, 53-year-old James Holloway. We know that over the past 20 years, Holloway worked for several state agencies. We also know he lived in Manteca, that is in San Joaquin County, between Stockton and Modesto. Channel 3's Gary Gabriel is in front of Holloway's house in Manteca for us tonight. Gary, what else have you been able to find out about Holloway? Not much, Stan. This single-story home, as you mentioned, north of Manteca, used to be Jim Holloway's home before he was killed this morning. Tonight, investigators do know a bit more about the gunman. They say he lived here for at least two years. He lived here alone. His neighbors say he was quiet. But everyone tonight is still baffled about a motive for Holloway's one-man assault this morning on a state building in Sacramento. State police spent three hours searching through this home near Manteca for a motive into Friday morning siege in downtown Sacramento. They found none. What they did find, however, was a rifle and a box of paperwork, which investigators described only as Holloway's correspondence with various state agencies. They would not say what the correspondence was about. We wanted to uh, make entry and establish whether there was any uh, clues as to uh, why this occurred or uh, any evidence uh, that would be critical to the uh, case or investigation. So far, nothing has uh, surfaced. Uh, Neighbors describe Holloway as a quiet man with an alcohol problem. Surprised me. I mean, he was pretty quiet. I, I didn't know I had any guns over there or anything, so it really surprised me. He did have weapons, yes. I've seen them. And you said earlier that he drank. 
Yes, we drink. Excessively? Well, let's put it this way. I uh, collect cans and bottles, and he used to give me his bottles. And uh, would you say uh, four gallons of wine a week, excessive? Investigators say Jim Holloway was very familiar with firearms. After a military service in the 60s, he joined the California Highway Patrol as a traffic officer. He left the CHP in 1970 and joined the state alcohol beverage control as an investigator. But in 1985, he left the ABC under protest. The exact reason for his dismissal has not been revealed. His assault on the State Board of Equalization was apparently tied to a long-running feud with the state of California. We understand the uh, suspect had some uh, documents in his possession that we believe that he was having some taxation problems and uh, had gone to the uh, Board of Equalization. Relatives of Holloway who drove from Stockton to help investigators had no comment about this morning's incident. State police believe Holloway's motive may be as much a mystery to them. And as we heard in Tracy's report a moment ago, Holloway did apparently tell his hostages shortly before he died that he was having tax problems. State investigators are hoping that the paperwork they pulled out of this house earlier tonight will help them find out what kind of tax problems he was suffering from. And apparently it was those problems that led to this morning's violent, deadly outburst in Sacramento. Back to you in Sacramento. Gary, there's been some earlier speculation that he might have gotten confused and gone to the wrong building. That in fact he wanted to go to the Franchise Tax Board. Has anything more been said about that tonight? No, we have heard nothing about that from relatives, from neighbors, and investigators have remained uh, uh, tight-lipped about that as well. Again, there's still uh, a great deal of mystery about exactly why he went to that particular building this morning and exactly what kind of tax problems he was suffering from. No one knows for sure. Mm -hmm. This incident, of course, raises many issues. Gary, thank you. In the meantime, in the wake of today's violence, state employees and their unions say they're concerned about security in state office buildings. This isn't the first time that state workers have been targets of angry citizens. Channel 3's Alice Scott explains more. In shock and upset and scared, and we still don't know how this happened with a secure building like this. The State Board of Equalization Building Security System was reduced to shattered glass by a gunman with a grudge against state workers. The non-bulletproof glass enclosure for the guard, cameras, monitors, and key cards for employees were no safety net. He walked in, displayed a weapon, and the security guard uh, left the scene. He has never had any security before. And now they've got all the security, and it didn't do any good. According to the director of the 2,300-person department, chairs and tables helped save the day. The, the uh, work areas are secure. The lobby has doors coming off it, and I had them secure the lobby doors on each floor. How? Yeah. Secure, secure. With tables, chairs, and locks where you have them? Almost every state building is vulnerable to irate citizens. State worker Ruth Wyatt has had problems where she processes unemployment claims. Well, sometimes if they've got out of hand, we had to call the security. We had to call security or we had to call the police. People upset about their unemployment? About the unemployment or their health uh, benefits or whatever. The Union for State Workers is investigating this latest incident to see if security procedures should be improved. This is not the first time such an incident has happened. In the last few years, we have had incidents of this kind of thing happening, uh, violence in both uh, uh, an office building or in one of our state institutions. We had a state employee murdered, uh, and it is a deep concern that we've got to look into for uh, the future. In Sacramento, I'm Alice Scott, Channel 3 reports. Alice adds that while state employees are concerned about security, the number of state police officers is being cut back. There are 400 state officers statewide. 87 of them will receive layoff notices by June. The weather continues to play a major role. In that will be the first day of work since last Friday's fatal hostage ordeal. A gunman took seven employees captive before a SWAT team shot and killed him. Today, the building's 18th floor, where the drama came to an end, shows no signs of the incident. Even damaged carpets and windows have now been replaced. One of the employees who encountered the suspect on the 18th floor told us today that the gunman had many, many potential victims. I'm just glad he didn't really want to kill anybody, because he sure would have had his choice of anybody. I think that maybe he could have probably shot 10 or 15 people had he wanted to. The state is supplying counseling sessions for employees who are nervous about going back to work tomorrow morning. 
The Sacramento Philharmonic put a social issue to music this weekend, offering a musical tribute to those who have died from AIDS. I think people are getting a false uh, sense of uh, security uh, by seeing a guard in full uniform in the basement and not knowing he, he's not trained in a CPR first aid or he's not even armed. Uh, I think they're wasting their money. The state is providing counseling sessions for employees who are nervous about going back to work in the morning. Don't be surprised if when you... Equalization building. Workers struggle to cope with the after effects of a gunman's hostage siege. But as Channel 3's Tracy Bryan tells us, counselors were on hand today to help them make it through a rough day. I'm just real upset. Tense. <laughs> it is in our office. Nobody's really working. You look at everybody that comes in now. And just a little noise will make you jump. Monday morning. Harder to face than ever for state equalization employees returning to work. Friday's violent scenes haunt most everyone stepping into the lobby. Violence sparked when 53-year-old James Holloway, carrying four guns, blasted his way into the building and took hostages. Dennis Kelly was one of those who looked into Holloway's eyes and can't forget the gun staring back. Uh, every time I see an elevator open or whatever now, it's like, like I cringe and it's like even when I walked out of my office this morning to go warm up my coffee in the microwave, it was like I was really kind of real leery and, and I'm jumpy. You know, it's like, you know that... You know, I don't think anything is going to happen at all today, but yet at the same time, you don't know. Hundreds of workers attended two counseling sessions provided by the mental health department. Because I'm not sleeping, um, I don't want to be here. It's real scary to be here. The main thing I want to get out of it is just to be, be reassured that this ain't going to happen again, you know, and that's my main concern. Security is also a concern of the State Employees Union, representing 100,000 state workers. Now, this is a glaring example of what happens when you contract out state services jobs once done by state employees, such as the state police, and you contract out to private security firms. We've been concerned about this for years, that uh, it's dangerous working in these state buildings. Some employees are calling for bulletproof glass in the lobby security cage. Holloway's bullet shattered the cage on Friday. Others want armed guards. The Board of Equalization's executive director says he'll review those requests, but he's not making any promises on changes. I've been told by the police that there's no system that can control somebody who doesn't care if they live or not. In Sacramento, Tracy Bryan, Channel 3 reports. Tracy also notes that employees moved into that new building just six weeks ago. At the time, they were assured that the security system was brand new and, in fact, state-of-the-art. Workers there, as well as the union, are calling for more improvements in the system. Cult members hold up in the branch division.